Hello everyone, my name is Caden Herring and I'm a consultant at Encryption Consulting. Today I'm going to show you how to sign an Excel macro file using our code signing solution called Code Sign Secure. So let's get right into it. So before we can sign Excel macro files, there's a few tools we're going to need to install to ensure that it works. All of these tools are available in the description and step-by-step -step explanations on how to install them are written down on our blog post, also in the description. So check those out for more information. So first we have to install our encryption consulting signing KSP. So we navigate to the website, which is going to be codesignsecure.encryptionconsulting.com. You log in with your Microsoft account. And then you navigate to the left side right here where it says signing tools. And then you click download on the signing KSP right here. It's super easy to install, basically does everything for you. So next we have to install Windows Source Development Kit, and this is what installs Windows Sign Tool, a program that will help us with signing macros. So all you have to do is navigate to this link, which is in the description, and then you download the installer with this button, and it downloads this, the uh, Windows Source Development Kit setup.exe. So all you got to do is open it. It's already installed on this computer, so it looks a little bit different, but you specify the location. And then on this page, only make sure that this is selected, Windows SDK Signing Tools, and then click Download. So next, we have to install the Windows Subject Interface Package for VBA projects. It's available from this link right here. You click Download, and it downloads as this. So when you click it, you need to accept the license agreement, and then it'll ask you for which path you want the files to be installed to. The default path is Administrator, as you can see right here. These files are already installed, all of these files right here. The most important two you want to look at are these two library files. So after the files are installed, you're going to want to go to where you installed them, which is right here as the default path. You want to copy this path and open an admin command prompt. And then what you're going to want to type is regsvr32.exe. And then the complete path to both of those DIL files. <clears throat> so it's going to be this, and then another slash, and then the name of the file, which is msosip.dll for one of them. And then you click enter, and it says that it succeeded. And then you want to do the same exact thing except for the other file, which is the same file just with an X before the DLL. So you do it for both of these files. It says that it succeeded, and then we can move on to our next step. So next we have to download a Microsoft Visual C++ redistributable installer. So all you have to do is navigate to the link in the description, and then it automatically installs this .exe file. It looks different on my computer since we've already installed it, but it's a super simple process. You go through, you click next, and you install it, piece of cake. So now we can actually start signing. So open another command prompt and make sure it's an admin command prompt. And then you're going to want to type CD and then this path. You're going to want to type the complete path to where the signed tool is installed, specifically the x86 version. So by default, the path is here. Program files x86, Windows kits, 10, bin, the version, and then x86. So this is where you're going to want to run your commands from. So copy this, paste it in front of CD, and then now you're running commands from this path. Now we can actually run our sign tool command. So this is an example of what your sign tool command could look like. It's going to look a little bit different because you might be signing different files using different certificates and whatnot. But right here we have our sign tool. We're calling the exe. So we're telling it to sign. And then right here is CSP slash CSP. This is what our crypto storage provider is going to be, which is in this case encryption consulting's own key storage provider. And then for KC, we put the name of our certificate that we're going to be used to sign. These certificates were made available from the Encryption Consulting Code Signing website. As you can see right here, under our Keys and Certificate page, this is the certificate that we're using right here. And then dash F is the complete path to where our certificates.pem file is stored. For slash FD, we put our desired algorithm for signing. For slash TR is the uh, full URL of our timestamp server. Slash TD is the algorithm that the timestamp server is going to be using. And then at the very end, in quotes, we're going to put the full path to the file we're going to sign. So when I click enter, 
and it says that it successfully signed right here. And now to verify the file, all we have to do is type this command, which is going to be sign tool verify, and then the path to our file that we need to verify. We'll click enter, and it shows the algorithm and the timestamp, and that it's successfully verified. Okay, so now for something a little bit more interesting. We're going to go to our code sign secure website. So one function on this website is the ability to activate or deactivate certificates that can be used to sign. So, so far we've used our EV code signing certificate uh, and it's worked since it's shown as active right here. But if we were to use an inactive certificate, the process would fail. So for example, we're going to switch over to using this certificate right here, for example, and then the process is going to fail. All right, so here we are with our command, but now instead of using this certificate, we're going to use the other certificate. All right, and then let's click enter. And it says sign tool error, no private key available. And that basically means that the private key for this certificate is not registered or working with this uh, process, which is obvious because it's inactive. So of course it would fail. So that's just a good example of how you can use our, our website services to uh, control your code signing. And with that, our signing process is complete. You can check out our website for more information on Code Sign Secure and how to do different types of signing with different types of files. And you can email us with questions at info at encryptionconsulting.com for more information.